All you have to do is walk along the streets of the major US cities and you will understand the reality of the situation the world is in today. The global economic collapse is underway. People are living at the absolute edge and it's only getting worse. This is covered up by the ballooning size of government and yet they haven't created any meaningful solutions. Of course not. They are the problem in the first place. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today I'm going to show you several factors related to the US economy, but of course this is applicable to basically any country you look at. We have these supposed solutions that come out that only make things worse, only make matters worse as time goes on. We are talking about increased taxation, increased quantitative easing, decreased interest rates, and any number of issues that they can bring up are always exacerbated by what they try to accomplish. They say one thing and they do another. Unfortunately, this is happening time and time again. It doesn't matter who's in charge today. Ultimately, the problems will get worse as time goes on. I had just done a video about this. Ford plans 7,000 salary job cuts by September, supposedly saving 600 million a year. There are some further details in this article here. If you're interested in reading it out of autonews.com, they show you the letter from the CEO and it just goes into a little bit more detail if you wanna see that. The reason I'm bringing this up again, not just to give you that extra detail, but also to talk about the fact that we hear consistently everything that's going on right Right now is because of the growth of e-commerce. In that video I did, I didn't show the usual chart that I do, which basically highlights the fact that retail sales, if you look at all of them in the United States, 11% of those are from e-commerce. And you can say, well, this is the reason why it's so low and this and that. Ultimately, it only makes up a small percentage of the total. This is an absolute fact. But at the same time, it's not just retail stores that are closing. You have to understand, look at this case here. Ford is laying off 10% of its global workforce. They're doing so immediately. When you look at other details, it shows us that manufacturing is also taking a hit. But I look at the jobs numbers and they're telling me, well, we added 20,000 manufacturing this month, 10,000 the next month, a million the next month, and they can come up with any number. People will just take it, whatever it is. It doesn't even have to be real. Dress Barn is going out of business, plans to shut all 650 stores. So my guess right now is that we are at or around that 7,000 store closures for 2019 mark. I haven't got the total yet, but of course, when I do, I'm gonna bring that to you. We need to see a tally of this, it's important. You might look at Dress Barn and think for yourself that this is just one company. They were doing this wrong, they were doing that wrong. It's the rise of e-commerce. But not all of these companies are doing something wrong. Not all of these companies are going to be closing in the same year because of the same issues of not being profitable suddenly and so on. We have an issue that's going on that needs to be discussed. You can look at some of the best places in the United States, the A1 locations, they're empty. They can't afford the rent in these places, even when we're talking about these multi-billion dollar companies. That's a problem when you have this going on. At the same time, you look at what's occurring, it's all across the spectrum of different companies that are suffering. Yes, there's a problem that they're not making the profit they used to. They need to squeeze more and more out of the customer. They're trying new things. They're not working. Things aren't making sense anymore. And at this time here, we are finding that the old way isn't the new way. That is understood. But the see the rate at which these stores are closing is unprecedented. You have to understand. Then there's the criticisms. Why isn't he saying how many stores are opening? I have covered it more than once, but I'll say it again. The last time I checked, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but it was in the 2000s of stores that are opening. There are stores opening. There are stores opening every single day, but go around your neighborhood and I'm sure there's a store on the corner 
that is consistently brand new. There's a new store there every month, it seems. First, it's a bakery, then it's a hairdresser, then it's a corner store. And every month you pass by, you realize there's no possible way. There must be a curse on that location because it's always a new place. And this happens over and over again. So you're seeing that number going over and over. Doesn't it look great that if this is happening all across the United States, you're seeing these store openings at the same time. Of course, it's the same locations all the time. This happens, but people don't get that through their heads. And my goodness, what a rant that was. If you want to stay in tune with the numbers, you can go to dailyjobcuts.com. This website breaks it all down. Left-hand side, layoffs, and you can see Ford as is in that list there in the middle. You're looking at the bankruptcies, and on the right-hand side, all of the closings. So that just shows you everything you need to know. They don't give you a big tally. I wish they really did, but ultimately, this is the best source that I have found that shows you day-to-day -day everything that's happening. Then I wanted to switch gears over to the actual economic factors and how this all affects people. Nearly 1 in 10 adults reported problems of paying the rent or mortgage in 2018. Over 1 in 5, 23%, reported household food insecurity. We have an issue here that people need to understand. And let me read this one more. And over 1 in 6 reported going without medical care because of its costs. That's when you know you have a serious issue. Look at this here, just a sample size of the real problems that are going on in the United States, but I'm sure the same issues are happening everywhere you look. Yes, there are people today in the United States that are doing very well. I assure you, go around and you can see the Maseratis, you can see the Ferraris and the Lamborghinis everywhere you look, but more and more tent cities are popping up. More and more people are right at the edge. They're right there. They got the maximum amount of debt. They are paying in lump sums for things like vacations, their toasters, their blenders. My goodness, why is that even an option? If you can't afford it, you can't buy it. That's simply the way it should be. But here we are. Credit cards are maxed out. Student loans are maxed out. They're hoping for a debt jubilee, and I don't think that's coming. Although they suggest this could be next time around. We'll see about that. This year, playing catch up in the game of life, millennials approach middle age in crisis. New data shows that they're in worse shape than every preceding living generation and may never recover. This is in part sometimes by the individual's uh, own issues, okay? They are the ones that cause this in some cases. They bought an iPhone when they didn't need one. They were taking their own car when they should have been taking the bus and so on, okay? I get that. There's consumerism and everything. At the same time though, we have have issues that are going on which were not present in the previous generation. So we need to look at this holistically and understand all the details that go with it. Really quickly, market conditions in the first quarter of 2019 have been challenging. Demand has generally been lackluster, reflecting softness in manufacturing activity and continued weakness in automotive. This is important to look at. We've been seeing the details of the car industry, how hard it has been hit. Manufacturing, of course, is also a factor here. You're looking at the trade issues going on between the US and China primarily, but we've also seen the issues going on between the US and the EU. The US and Canada and Mexico. I mean, there's been a whole laundry list of issues that need to be dealt with and will be coming up as the years go on. You're looking at the president of China having a little visit to a rare earth producer. And this is important because of rare earths and how instrumental they are in so much technology today. And China has the vast monopoly over this market there's no doubt about that. They're thinking maybe, just maybe, that the president of China is going to consider, if necessary, a complete export ban on rare earths. That would be extremely devastating. And of course, that would be something that is just extremely intense, extremely bold. I don't know if they'll ever do this, but it's certainly an option. So that's what's happening today. I just wanted to show you that as well. This 
this just gives you a breakdown of the taxation that people are facing in these areas he, in the right hand side there here is a ranking of the combined taxpayer burden for taxpayers living in the 10 largest cities from best to worst phoenix is the number one 13,000. you go to the very bottom chicago and just above that new york city chicago's just incredible when i see the amount of taxation that people have to deal with in illinois in general i mean come on i i don't understand how they can get away with this but every week i don't do a video about it but every single week i see some sort of new tax either implemented or they're talking about implementing it's insane the people who live in illinois the people who live in chicago please let me know what you think about the taxation there i really need to know i've heard from so many people before and it is the most ridiculous i have ever heard of this is the last thing i wanted to mention here and i'm not going to get into all the details it's a bloomberg article boom in dodgy wall street deals points to market trouble ahead they're talking about the ipos they're talking about how all of these companies are just rushing to get their ipos right in now because they're worried about being late in the cycle there's not going to be enough money there this bull market is starting to fade out so you're going to see more risk you're going to see more danger that is present and also how it relates to these companies coming on the market and their valuations are going to be completely messed up we're going to see some chaos and this could increase the turbulence that we are seeing in the market that's all for this video if you found it informative please give me a thumbs up if you like the rant gps give me a thumbs up thank you very much if you want the financial education you weren't taught in school these two books have everything you need all the details from a to z foundation history making money reducing your debt self-sufficiency all the details are in the link in the description if you want the audiobook that's available at the money gps.com don't go anywhere i have a lot of detail in this video here so all you got to do is click on it and i will see you there